Good evening and welcome. What a lovely sunset here at Site B. It's Saturday evening. I'm taking a walk and it's time. We haven't had a walk and talk in about a week. So it's time once again to do what we usually do when we have a walk and talk. And that's of course again, play my favorite game. Oh, why is this a thing? Yes. Okay. So today's why is this a thing is a comment I read on a website or page or YouTube or Twitter. I don't remember. And it was, you cannot play role-playing games without combat. And there are no role-playing games that exist that don't have combat in them. And if it doesn't have combat, it doesn't meet the three pillars. That's a little term I'm hearing a lot lately, the three pillars of gaming. It's like the three pillars of social interaction that was supposedly invented by Wizards of the Coast for Strixhaven, even though, of course, it wasn't. So now apparently there's this three pillars of role-playing, and if you don't meet all three of the pillars, it's not a role-playing game. And one of those three pillars is apparently combat. If your role-playing game doesn't have combat in it, it's not a role-playing game. Except, of course, there are dozens of games on the market that don't have combat, or combat is not the focus. And there are literally hundreds of scenarios I could think of off the top of my head that can be resolved without combat. There are several world-class games, world-class adventures, world-class scenarios that are all written without any form of combat whatsoever and still tell an amazing story. Ocean's Eleven, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Rob, three casinos, no combat whatsoever. Still a great movie. Every romantic movie ever, the great romances, no combat. Still great movies. Why? Why? Because they have conflict and far too often people confuse combat with conflict. Now, if there are three pillars of role playing, which there isn't, that's bullshit. I don't know who came up with this idea. It's stupid. And yes, you cannot tell a story of any kind without some form of combat conflict. But you definitely can kill, tell a story that has absolutely no combat in it whatsoever. You can definitely run a game without any combat whatsoever. And you can definitely have a role-playing game on the market without combat. And it probably has a fan base. But you cannot have any type of story or any type of pillars of interaction, whatever the nonsense that is, that you people are just making up without conflict. Conflict drives a story. Conflict drives life. Okay. Check out this guy, he's awesome. So, yes. It, conflict is definitely one of the most important aspects for any type of story. You can have dramatic conflict. You can have romantic conflict. You can have comedic conflict. You can have horror, horror conflict. You can have interpersonal conflict. You can have thriller conflict, psychological conflict, all sorts of conflicts. And you definitely need conflict to move a role-playing game scenario forward. But you don't need combat. So anybody who's going around saying if it doesn't have combat in it, it's not a role-playing game. Does, yeah, no, that's not, not the, no. Okay. <laughs> if it doesn't have conflict in it of any type, then it's not a role-playing game. It's not, it's not anything. It's, it's a sandwich. You no, know, even a sandwich has conflict involved in it. There is nothing in life that does not involve some form of conflict. Now, the conflict can be simply innocuous. Making a sandwich. That's a pretty innocuous, harmless action, right? Two pieces of bread, some condiments, some toppings, done. But there's conflict. 
the conflict is making choices. What kind of bread do I want to use? What, what condiments do I want? What layers do I want to put on the sandwich? What layers am I going to put the, them in order? You know, uh, am I going to toast it? Am I not going to toast it? Do I want cheese? Do I not want cheese? Do I want mustard? Do I not want mustard? That's all decision-making choices that are running through your head in millions and millions and millions of miles per second that you're not even aware that you're making. But that's all conflict. That's all yes and no's. Every yes and no question has a 50-50% chance of being yes or no. That's conflict. Every time there has to make a choice. That's conflict. What toppings do I want on my sandwich? That's conflict. So, yeah. Conflict exists in every story, in every aspect of life. From the moment you get up to the moment you go to sleep, and even while you're sleeping, there's some form of conflict going on. You cannot tell a story without conflict. You can definitely have a role-playing game that doesn't have conflict in it. There's a Jane Austen role-playing game. There are dozens of other role-playing games that either don't have conflict in it or don't focus on conflict, but they do have task resolution charts. The Jane Austen role-playing game has task resolution charts. If you're rolling a dice to resolve a task, whether that task be romance Mr. Smitherburn or sneak down the stairs, if that dice roll is happening, if that task is being resolved, if there's a question you might succeed or fail, that's conflict. So I don't know why this is the thing, other than we're just looking for pointless reasons to argue with each other, but there's my two cents on it. Yes, you need conflict to tell a role-playing game. But as for you cannot have a role-playing game without combat, and there's no role-playing game in existence without combat, that's just being stupid. So stop it. Just stop. I'm the OGGN. If you appreciate this conflict that's coming out of my conflicted mouth, let me know. If you conflict my decisions and think I'm wrong, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Help me hit 1,000 subs by, I don't know, Christmas. Till next time, stay safe.